What's good, everybody? Time for a DL short. So why do some women have such a problem with red pill content? Well, everyone, even in today's world, understands the difference between right and wrong. Everyone understands equity, be equity, and they understand when something is unfair. I think that most women, when you're discussing the current dating situation or you're discussing the family court situation with alimony, child support, child custody, most women, when you sit them down and actually discuss it, will tell you it's unfair towards men in America. And that conversation is a tough conversation to have. I ain't gonna lie to you. If I had all the cards, right, and if my life were really easy and someone came along to tell, you know, hey, let's really talk about this, man. You know, this isn't fair. You know, these people over here, these, this group over here is suffering while you're sitting over here, you know, living high on the hall. That's going to be a tough one because you got to sit back and be like, either you have to accept it is, it's unfair and want to try to change it or you got to say, well, oh, well, that's just how it is. <laughs> and that just kind of shows who you are, right? So the red pill content today, especially with YouTube and other forms of, of uh, media, social media, shines a light on a situation that is not right in our society. And now we get to see people try to argue. There's a small group of women who want to argue that it's not a problem. And the argument isn't the dating marketplace or the court system or anything like that. The argument is you guys shouldn't have this content out there. You guys are bad. Like we're just giving you the numbers, just giving you the truth, just showing you how difficult it is. And we're telling men that they need to, if they want to attract women, become better. Or if they don't like the system the way it is, just to not participate, right? And women, some women, are having a hard time with this. Other women are just like, yeah, it's messed up. It's bad. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Right? It, uh, some women, and most of the women who are okay with this knowledge or this information are married. Like the women who are married, they have their children, they have the man that they want, they have their husband and all that, their family's intact. Those women, they'll come out and say, yeah, this, this is bad. This is bad. Some will say, well, if these, if what you're telling me is true, because most of them haven't looked into it, why would they? <laughs> They're not a part of that world. They'll just sit there and say, man, that's, that's wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Something needs to be done. And they go back to their, to their life. There are some women who look at it and say it's wrong, but they understand even the ones who are married and like, well, it's a safety net. I don't want to remove my own safety net because I might decide I want to get out of the situation I'm in. Right. So why would I eliminate forever like alimony? Cause I might qualify for that. I don't want to get rid of that. That's an option. Why would I make it harder for me to keep my children, you know, under the current system? It's like, well, I want to make sure I have my kids. And if I have my kids, of course I should be compensated for it. So some women look at it and they're like, well, that's just the system. They won't, <laughs> they won't do anything about it. But there's there's become there is I said there's become that but there is a growing number of women who are just and some men too who are just convinced the problem isn't the dating marketplace or the course the problem is there are men like Rolo Tomasi Fresh and Fit Rich Cooper Michael Sertain you know Coach Greg Adams who are out there educating men and giving men options. So they're like, you guys are the problem for shining a light on this issue. You guys must stop. So we got a video. <laughs> we got a video. I want to check out here, guys. This is uh, Access Vegas. This is Michael Sertain's show. But I got this clip from Rational Mail Clips. Shout out to both those brothers, Michael Sertain and Rolo Tomasi. Let's see what Michael Sertain does. He, he puts a table full of women, kind of fresh and fit style. Only difference is uh, Mike knows these women. They're his friends. 
and they're attempting to have a conversation about dating dynamics with friends as opposed to what Fresh and Fit does. They're sitting at a table full of strangers and they're just having a, t- a conversations about the sexual dynamic in both platforms will use facts and use studies and use, you know, articles and information and, and have these conversations. But whether you're friends with the, the women or they're strangers, the conversations tend to flow a certain way. Every now and then on Fresh and Fit, you'll have a woman who's like, yeah, you know, the way it is right now is really bad. Uh, I feel sorry for these dudes who can't get on. And yeah, women do this over here. You get a little bit of that on Access Vegas as well. So this clip we're about to watch has one woman who's a good friend of Michael Sertan's. I don't know her name. Forgive me. I don't know her name. But I got to tell you, there are a lot of women like her out there. And you can just see the anger that she has when it comes to these topics, right? So let's get into it and check it out. Date on your level. Tell that, uh, tell that to the 80% of women who want the top 5% of men. And men want the top 1% uh, that's not of true. beautiful women. Hold so, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Men want youth and beauty. Sure. They all want the girl that doesn't have to wear makeup and that she's just naturally so, beautiful and that she's just all these submissive and perfect. Men want that too. They can't have it. They can't get it. But they all <laughs> want that 1% too. This narrative that women are the ones that only have these specific preferences. They always get married. They always get married. <laughs> Ooh. Isn't that called settling? Men. Okay, yeah. ready? There's a there's a, a recent, there was an author. She did a, a survey. I, don't, I, I think I sent you this. And mm-hmm. they asked men, this g- large group of men, if you got 80% of everything you wanted in a partner, would you be happy? Would you think that was fantastic? And the vast majority of men were like, 80%? Fuck yeah, that's incredible. Then they asked a large group of women, if you got 80, if you got 80% of what you wanted in your partner, uh, would you be happy? And the vast majority of women said, no, 80%, that's fucking settling. First of all, these statistics, where are they coming from? And who are these women? Are they standing outside of a bar with the girls drunk? so So as you can see right away, when you get some studies or whatever, there's gonna be pushback. I understand that. But this this woman right here. I mean, her pushback is vigorous. There are a ton of clips. I couldn't find the whole episode. I'm pretty sure it was a few hours. I'm still looking for it. Maybe they haven't posted it yet. Maybe they got to do some editing or something, but I'm like looking for it, right? I want to sit down and watch the long form of this this conversation. But this lady right here with the the Nike sweatshirt on, um, with all the tattoos, like her, she has like a whole sleeve of tattoos on one arm and a couple of tattoos on another. Apparently she's married. Um, she definitely has some work done. An attractive woman, but bro, who would want to deal <laughs> with this? You know what I mean? Like all day, every day. Like wow. Um, but that's over here. I don't know her. I'm not, you know, not trying to throw shade at her or anything like that. I mean, this is a debate, so she's out there. You know what I mean? Holding up her end of the debate. I'm not mad at her. But the fact that eighty percent of men, well, most men, will be ecstatic man so happy if they got 80 percent of what they're looking for out of a woman and i'm here to tell you like that's that's a good deal like if i could get 80 percent, like yo i'm looking this here's 100 percent of what i want i found a woman who possesses 80 percent of that yeah man i got it that's a good one right there whereas women same 80 percent, they're like no i'm settling i gotta have i gotta have more i gotta have more like yo how much more how much more? And I, I mean, we all know people like that Like in our own lives. Like, okay, well, I, yeah, I've met some women who let some good guys go. I've met some men who let some good women go. But you're getting 80% of what you want and you want more? Ooh, that's tough. And the fact that Rolo started it off that the vast majority of women are all targeting the same guy. If you have to have... 90 plus percent of what you're looking for in order to be happy with a relationship and all women tend to want the same characteristics out of a dude they want a guy who has who's taller than them you know a lot of them say preferably over six feet they want guys who are very very financially secure six figures or more nowadays it's seven figures plus is what they really want because they want to be stable with this guy on this got to be stable they want him to be funny they want him to be charming they want him to be in shape 
right? They want him to be a leader, right? And then the list goes on and on and on. If most women are looking for the same thing in men and they only want the top, I got to have a guy that has 95% of this stuff, 90, 95% of this, these traits. If that guy is going to be one of the most sought after men in the dating pool, which means all these women are going to shoot their shot, which means the vast majority of dudes below him, right? 95% of men that they're, they're aren't good enough. Women don't like having these conversations because when you say it out loud, it doesn't make sense. And they know it. You can't defend it. It doesn't make sense. It's like, well, that's just what I want. Okay, fine. But you got to understand that this doesn't work. And then that guy has all the choice in the world. So he's going to run through as many women as he wants until he's happy and he finds the one he wants or he finds the group of women that he wants. A lot of these dudes at the top, man, they just continue to run a rotation. But this this woman and the woman on the panel on this particular show are saying that men are the problem. Men are running through these women. Men want young girls. Men want, want, want. And it's men's fault. And it's just like that doesn't compute, especially when you say it out loud. <laughs> that doesn't know. What are you talking about? That makes zero sense. Let's continue. Years cool. old, then let's, like, yes. So, so that's, that's, that's sapphire. Fire. So let's <laughs> let's one survey. Let's look at another survey. Let's okay. look at the forty million people okay. that are on dating apps. Eighty. Well, those women find eighty percent of the men on those dating apps to be below average attractiveness. You don't know a person on a, unattractive. That makes zero. That has nothing to do with nothing because you're on a dating app. You don't know that person. You you don't know that no, no, person. Physical attractiveness. I know, but you don't know that person. It doesn't matter. But you can still rate them on physical 80, attractiveness. Eighty percent. You can still rate someone on physical attractiveness, even if you don't know them. Unattractive. But you're not giving someone a chance. No, no, no. The, you're, you're, tell, you're making my yeah, point yeah, for me. No, 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 you're no, making right. my point what for I'm, me. What I'm saying to you is, you're saying that the girls are not going to give the men a chance because they don't find No, no, no. What, what I'm saying is, you said before that men and women are the same and that they only want to date the top 5%, and that is not true. The top 10% of men on, on dating apps get 63% of right swipes. The top 43% of women get the top 63% of right swipes. The top 40% of men get 96% of right swipes on dating apps. It is so skewed towards the top 4.5% of men on dating apps for men men but for women it's the top 45 percent of women it's not even close 55 percent of the time men swipe right five percent of the time women swipe right what women is and then she's going to ask what is white right was that's that's an honest valid question that's a very valid honest question right there it, that means that men are interested when you swipe right on a dating app that means you like quote unquote that individual you want you know what i mean you and if they like you back then you guys can talk so the right swipe means i'm interested so Women are only interested 5% of the time, right? They only, they only swipe right. They're only interested in dudes. They're only interested in the top 5%. Whereas men are interested in almost half of the women, like 45%. I mean, that's just dating apps. And I tell people a lot of time, stay off of dating apps. I'm on a dating app now. I just ended my subscription. I, I, I paid for one month. Uh, because uh, Brother Dino Dinosaur wanted me to kind of do an experiment and see how hard it would be to meet a woman online on Tinder. And I, I signed up for Tinder. And um, I think I got about 30 likes so far from women. And I haven't reached out to these women to see if I can set up uh, a date or anything like that. And the mission would be just to get them to, to meet for coffee or something like that, right? I'm pretty sure I'll get one or two to meet me for coffee. But the, the thing is this. You know, online dating is so skewed for men. Like, you have to be a certain type of dude. Now, you got to understand, I'm older. I'm older. I don't look my age. Um, my Instagram and the pictures that I posted on the Tinder app are interesting. I've lived a pretty cool life. So I can at least get some women to look like, hmm. And with someone like me in my age group, that that woman is probably looking for some sort of long term relationship. Right. So it's not like when we were younger. But. For every. Right swipe or like that I get. The average woman is probably getting. 20 to 50, maybe 100 right swipes. That's how skewed it is. It's crazy. And then there are women out there who just refuse to accept that the game is like that. 
they're, well, they're like, no, and it's still, it's just it's the man's fault because most of the women who deal with top tier dudes are dealing with guys who have options, dealing with dudes who have, you know, a plethora of choice, dealing with guys who have standards, dealing with dudes who won't hesitate to say no. And they've got their game down to a science where they're just smashing left and right. And a lot of women are, they'll, they'll throw their sexuality out there. Like this is getting because my sex is the best sex ever. And when she finds out that there's nothing different from your sex to her sex, to her sex, to these guys, it doesn't matter because he could easily replace that woman and her sex, but she can't find another one of him. It is really hard to find a multimillionaire who's single, who's handsome, who has his stuff together, right? They're hard to find who's in shape. Like, I mean, think about it. 70, 70 to 75% of Americans are either obese or overweight, right? Right off the rip, you're talking about 30 to 35% of America who are just fit. Think about that. Then you add, you add the money to it. You know, something like 15% of Americans uh, earn over $100,000 a year. The average American, the average income per person in the United States and this was as of 2022 was $65,423. That's the average individual income. When you talk to women and you ask them, well, how much money you want your man to make It's almost always six figures or more. So think about that. The person that they are looking for is such a hard person to find here in America. Whereas a beautiful woman is extremely common. Been our pick here. Like Swipe right on. Oh, sorry, if on dating apps. Like or men are they just desperate. desperate. Oh, no, but men are. I agree. Yeah. Men are desperate and women are picky. But yeah. my point is, her point was that we saw it the same, and it's not true. Men are happy with an eighty percent solution, and women find an eighty percent solution to be settling. That's the issue we're saying. And seventy to eighty divorces are initiated by. Oh God, women. You women. Men can't just go around doing whatever the fuck they want to do. <laughs> And acting however they want to act and be unhealed and think I make fire and that the women are going to stay forever. Agreed. And stick agreed. Through it. So, so what we should do is an experiment where we remove men. What we should look at is lesbian <laughs> couples mm -hmm. and we should look at gay couples. And if what you're saying is true and the problem's actually men, gay couples should get divorced at a higher rate than lesbian couples. No one said the problem is men. I'm just saying that this whole narrative. How is that? The, you, you just said the problem is men. <laughs> the men. That get divorced fire. with <laughs> the men that get divorced with most of the time are ignoring the woman that's pleading with them to change or to level up Again, in some way. If what you're saying is true, mm -hmm. then if we looked at gay marriages and lesbian marriages, mm -hmm. what we should find because men are this problem is that men should get divorced at a higher rate than women do. And what we find is it's three and a half to one lesbian couples get divorced more than 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 gay couples. Do you know what a U-Haul lesbian is? <laughs> no, but <laughs> do you not? You guys don't know that term. So right now we get to see why women hate having this conversation because this young woman right here, right? Well, you know, she's probably in her thirties. She's not that young anymore, but she's still attractive. This woman right here is listening to her argument in real time. And she realizes cause she's smart. She realizes like, man, I'm losing this. I'm losing this argument. We're going to talk about you haul lesbians, right? She just said that the reason women leave their men is because the men have done something wrong because they refuse to heal. They refuse to get better. They refuse to level up. And that's why women initiate divorce 70 to 80 percent of the time in America. The reason women initiate divorce in America, in my opinion, is because they can. And they know that they're going to get paid in the process. It's not, well, I just, this isn't working. I want to just go on about my life and just, you know, leave. No, I'm going to leave and I'm taking stuff. I'm taking, you know, in a lot of cases, I'm going to take the house, take the car. I'm going to, you know, take the kids. I'm going to, you know, take a lot of your money. I'm take like, I'm taking your retirement. I'm taking the money we got in the bank right now. You're going to have to continue to pay me for an extended period of time because I'm no longer your wife now. You're going to have to pay me alimony. You're going to have to pay me for the children's child support. They understand that's how the system works. Period. You want the divorce rate to go down, make it harder to get married or harder to get divorced. Take the money out of it. And a lot of people will stay in their situation. The people who don't, the people who leave really didn't want to be in that situation. 
you you can't reward folks and think they're not going to take the reward. The system is not set up for couples to stay together. I would argue the system is set up for people to leave. Now, there are a lot of guys out there that don't agree with me. Okay, that's fine. I'm, you know, cool. But the way the system is set up, especially today when women are now beginning to out earn men in the workplace. The way the system is set up doesn't account for the shift in our society. This system was a great system for the 1960s, the 1970s, the 1980s. Women weren't in the workplace. Women were at home. Women didn't have careers for the most part. Right? So that made sense. You're going to have to do something. If you're going to, you know, these women are going to leave their relationship. You had to do something to make sure that they weren't destitute. They weren't on the streets or forced into the homes of their family, which probably will happen more often than not. That made sense. But now it doesn't make as much sense. Now, I will say this about the family law court. It's not gender biased in the sense that all they really want to know is who's making the money. And you can look at some of these big name stars who are out there today. And they go through a separation, they go through a divorce, they, and, you know, they divvy up the assets. And some of these big time female stars are, are just paying alimony, losing homes, having to pay child support because the, the, the dad is going to get, you know, the majority of custody of the children because he'd been watching them. And he had a really good attorney and they were able to make it work. But for the vast majority of people, you know, more than 90% of the time, custody goes to mom, child support goes from man to woman in America. Will that change in the future? I think so. I think that will that will change. That's just my take on it. Rolo says, nope, that's never going to change, but I think it will change. Let's continue. Let, no, girls I've fall in love that. super quickly. Sure. And they, they get a they get a U-Haul, and within the third date, they've moved in together, and they want to get married within yeah. a month because girls fall in love. That's why the divorce rate with women and lesbian couples are so high. It could be it that. Or, or it could be that. Or it could be that women just have a proclivity to get tired of a relationship easier than men do. Oh, good Lord. Is that not a possibility? That doesn't make zero sense. Girls want so badly to have their forever partner. And then so badly to leave their yeah. forever partner. Why no, would we no, want no. to start all None over? Of us want to leave. Why would we and want that's to That's why do you hear the, the, the it's mind boggling and it hurts. My brain hurts. Why would we <laughs> want to have someone that we start a life with and then, then have to end it all? To start all over again because, because, because it was because, only eighty percent. Yeah, because, of what because you only eighty percent of what you wanted, <laughs> no. and you guys grew apart. So that's no why. one wants to leave. No one no, wants agree. to like, put the no work agree, in to nobody, make it not nobody, be boring. Nobody wants to file an that's the problem. Nobody wants to file an Wait, insurance what? claim for their house that burned down. I agree. Said? But I said something important, but it's okay. Say no, it, say it. I don't remember. No, no, no. It's because it's <laughs> about it's about he's been smoking. She's been smoking. No, it's about doing. No, it's about doing the work, right? Yeah, doing the work. Yes, and that's that's the biggest thing that is why so many women end up with narcissists or they stay too long and they do things that they shouldn't do because and here we go that's why women wind up with narcissists again they, they got the wrong guy ladies and gentlemen if you choose the wrong person whose fault is it it's not that person's fault for being broken for being a narcissist right for being crazy it's your fault for filing for them. It's your fault for past for ignoring the red flags. It's your fault for allowing them to isolate you from your friends and your social group, right? From, from your day ones. That's your fault. It's your fault for not listening to your family and your close friends when they tell you, like, hey, you better watch this person. There's something, this, this person ain't right. That's your fault. It's your fault for allowing yourself to fall in love. Oh, my God, it was so amazing until it wasn't. This woman right here, and you can see we got this, the, the, look at her. Like she's right here, right now. Look at her on the left with the Nike sweatshirt on. She's very intelligent and she's thinking about her argument. She just proved Rolo's and Michael's point. Women get into relationships faster, seem to, they jump all in and then they want to get out. And here, legally, there's that mechanism. You can just file for divorce and you're gone. No fault. I don't even, you don't even need a reason to get divorced. And more than likely, you're going to get compensated for it. That's what's going on. That's the conversation women don't want to have. Not all women. 
again, there are women out there who they're living a good life. They got the man that they want. Same conversation. And they'll, they'll probably sound like me. They're like, yeah. So those women, they're not trying to do the work. Those women understand how hard it is to have a relationship, to have a marriage. They get it. They meant the words that they said, forsaking all others. You know what I mean? Till you know what I mean? Um, richer, poor, sickness, and health. They, they understand that. They meant the words and they made it work, right? 50% 50 of people didn't. And I always argue, they say 50% of marriages in America end in divorce. There's really somewhere between 46 and 48%, but people accept 50, right? 50% of marriages in America end in divorce. Of the 50% that don't get divorced, those aren't happy couples, right? So of the 50% that don't get divorced, there's a percentage there who just stay together for whatever reason. They don't want to go through the process either because we said the words and I don't want to break the vows or we got kids and we should stay together at least until the kids are grown or we have like our finances are so tangled. If we go through this, it's going to hurt us both. So they stay legally married, but then they go on with their lives. They live in separate homes. They have other relationships or whatever. So, you know, because I have this argument with a buddy of mine all the time because and actually we stopped because he would say, well, 50 percent of the time it works. Like, no, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't work. 50 <laughs> percent of the time. Those people don't get divorced legally, but it doesn't mean that their relationship works. Having a successful relationship takes a lot of work and it's very, very, very difficult. And people who are in successful relationships will tell you just that. The women at this table, I would argue, have never truly been in a successful relationship, obviously. You know, and they don't say, well, I'm married or whatever. Like, well, it's your first marriage. Well, no, it's my third, it's my fourth, it's my second, it's whatever. It's like, all right, so you still haven't been in a successful relationship. We don't know how the current relationship is going to go. We need time. <laughs> right? We need time. We'll tell. Will you make it past the 10 year mark? Maybe, maybe not. But when you get to the 10 year mark, if you're not happy, you can go. Now, I think there's an argument for women who are older. If they're married in their late 30s, early 40s. Yeah, they're not really trying to leave in their 50s. Like old girls say, who who's trying to get divorced and start all over? 70 to 80% of women who are currently married love. That's who, right? And what did Rolo say? Why are they doing it? Because they had to settle. They only got 80% of what they were looking for. They're out there trying to find out other, a guy who has the other 20%, right? So they're out there looking for the, the better things. And it's like, well, he wouldn't, he's traumatized and he won't take, you know, counseling and he's not trying to get better and he's not trying to level up. So I'm justified in leaving him. Okay, whatever. It's America. You do what you want. You don't need a reason to, to leave. But 70 to 80% of the time, women are leaving. Women are filing for divorce. Not men. Women. We have this hope. Like women mm -hmm. have hope and we have faith and we have all of these things. This is what inherently we carry with us. Like that's what the creator gave to us. That's, I, that was, that's, that's our, I, I love our your, I love all of your anecdotal experience, but like there's, <laughs> but, but, but no, the, like I there's mean, millions of studies that show but, this, like twice, like it's twice I'm, the number of men under the age of 30 but, are single but than, but I'm than serious, women. So you have to understand that then that comes to maybe they, there should be some light shed on the fact that men don't do a lot of like internal work. So if you and I get married and you're 25 years old, and I'm 25 years old. And in five years, we're both 30 years old. But I'm 37 years old because literally I've grown and I've matured and I've healed and I've and you wanted think, to and you think read books. 80, you think 80% of marriages are ending because of this? And I think that a majority of men don't think that therapy or reading a book about inner work or healing mm. is important to them. When and I, I think that when they separate... Because the hard talks weren't Tell talked us. before. Before they got married. I can tell you exactly. Go ahead. Why. Go ahead, Rolla. Because men and women don't process emotions the same way because we don't. Yeah, and Rolo goes into some some pretty valid points. But here's the here's the thing. Little Shorty, whoever she is, I forget her name. Um, and we're gonna do a couple more clips because they chopped this up and there's some really good gems here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely be posting them. There are a segment of women. Um, and I don't know where percentage. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and make up numbers. I don't know what percentage, but there's, there are a lot of women who think the same way that this young woman thinks, right? They look at these numbers, they look at these stats and they don't like what they see. 
and they're desperately seeking a way around the numbers. They're desperately seeking a way, a way around the science. You know, and it goes into narcissists and it goes into men refusing to better themselves. Why should a guy have to better himself? Isn't it on the other person to understand what they're getting themselves into? If I marry a woman who is overweight and she loves to eat and she doesn't want to work out, right? As we owe, as we age, metabolism is going to slow down more than likely she's going to gain weight. And if she doesn't want to eat healthy and she doesn't want to go to the gym, she's going to be, she's going to get big like 70 to 75% of America. The average, the average woman in America weighs about 170 pounds. If I don't want that, then I shouldn't be marrying her because our lifestyles don't link up. Now if that doesn't bother me. Like most men, don't really care once they once the men commit they women kind of let themselves go the guys kind of let themselves go they don't tend to leave you got to understand that within that 70 to 80 percent of women who are filing for divorce the vast majority of them are overweight or obese think about that for a minute it's not just the hot girls we hear the hot women have these conversations but they're not representative of the women who were doing this. Have you ever been to divorce court? Have you ever seen who goes through there? It's not packed full of just beautiful women. It's packed full of Americans, fat girls and fat dudes. Right? So what they're talking about and what they, what they really don't like is they know the system is unfair. They understand completely that marriage really hurts the guy for the most part financially. And what they have a hard time grasping is that the average man is invisible to most women, right? A lot of dudes, most dudes, like one in three dudes under 30, they're virgins. That's not the same for women. Women are dating and having intimacy at the same level they've always had since they've kept track of the numbers. Whereas men, the average man is getting less intimacy, right? Which has led to this whole culture, right? The involuntarily celibate man, the incel. But women are still getting that intimacy at the level they've always gotten it. So what does it mean? It means that more women are sharing the dudes in the top tier, the top 20% of guys. That's what that means. If you look at the numbers every now and then, you might get a guy from the bottom 80 who comes up because he got a little game or whatever. He came up at the right time. She wanted to do something. But who are they chasing? Who are these women going after? Who are these women really trying to get at? It's the top 20 percent of guys, not the bottom 80. The disparity is there. And when you bring all the numbers to the table, when you have just a normal conversation like this woman, she's really upset. But it's like, hey, shorty. This is how it is. And men understand how difficult it is to get women. Women have no clue because it's extremely easy for them to get men. Especially online, especially with technology. Look at any woman's DM on your, if she's on Instagram and her Instagram is open to the public, it's not, you know, it's not closed. Right? If, if, if she just, any woman who has an Instagram, Go on their DMs and see how many dudes are in there. Then take a guy, take an average guy. Like take a guy who's above average and open up his Instagram and open this, you know, open up his DMs. There's not any women in there, really. And the only women who are in there are the women that he reached out to and started conversations with. There's not women just hitting him up. You go to the average woman's Instagram and look at her DMs. Right, because if her Instagram is public, man, it is chock full of guys who are telling her how beautiful she is, liking her pictures, you know what I mean, trying to start conversations. It's just the way it is. Technology has made it to where the guys at the top have access to even more women. And all these women believe they're going to find a dude at the top who's going to be faithful to her and monogamous and they're going to ride off into the sunset and be ha and live happily ever after. 
that's even harder to find. I know one guy. I know one dude, just anecdotally speaking, I know one dude that has been completely faithful to his wife his entire life, has never strayed, never. And the dude to this day, women are everywhere he go, women are hitting him up. Everywhere he goes. Everywhere. Women are flirting. Everywhere. When I say everywhere, I'm talking, he pull up to the drive through women are flirting. If he walks into the grocery store, women are flirting. Oh, my God. If he walks into the hardware store, oh, my goodness, women are getting at him hard, bro. That's the new spot, y'all. If y'all don't know, women are in the hardware stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that, trying to come up on men. That's the new thing, y'all. I, I don't know if y'all know that or not, but if you out there trying to get on, go into the hardware store, bro. Go in there by yourself a light bulb. I'm telling you, some woman's going to approach you. I'm telling you. Everywhere he goes, whether his wife is with him or not, women hit on him. He ain't never strayed. Never. Now, can I say that about the vast majority of my male friends who are married? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They have on occasion stepped out and did their thing. It is what it is. I'm not judging. But women are throwing it at him. Right? So you want that guy, ladies? You want that guy. He's virtually impossible to find in today's world, just so you know. Just so you know. So this is why women don't like red pill content, because they don't like the facts that come along with red pill content. And it's extremely difficult to win the argument when their argument is backed by stats, numbers, science, and your argument is backed by feelings and emotion and anecdotal experience. And they understand that they're losing the debate and more and more men are beginning to pay attention. I'm not saying that men should stop dealing with women. I'm not saying that guys should go MGTOW. That's men going their own way. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is men should pay attention. Maybe sit down, maybe call your own number, maybe have a sit on the sit, uh, have a seat on the bench and just let the game play for a little while and then decide if that's something you want to deal with or not. And if you do want to deal with it, understand there's certain things you're going to have to do to make yourself more attractive to, to the vast majority of women. You're going to have to do some self-improvement. You're going to have to work on your body. You're going to have to work on your, your, your social skills. You're going to have to get your money up. Right? You're going to have to present in a certain way. You're going to have to get your game together. And at least you'll have an opportunity to engage with the vast majority of women. And even then, is going to be difficult, right? Because you're going to have to know what to look for and what to stay away from. So that's it right there, guys. That's why I think women can't stand RP content. The media and our society, the reasons they don't like red pill content is something different. We'll get into that in a later video. But the vast majority of women who are out here looking at this information, they don't like what they see because they know fundamentally it's wrong. They know it's unfair, right? They know dudes are losing. The vast majority of dudes are losing. And most women, it's not that they don't care. It's just to, to make the playing field level will take away their advantage. And why would you want to do that? Especially if you're winning. So that's my take on it. Let me know below what you guys are thinking. Uh, please hit up some comments and um, I will do my best to get back to you. I get back to most of those comments. I really do. If I don't understand a comment, I won't respond to it. If I think you're trolling, I won't respond to it, but I won't remove it. If it gets removed, that's YouTube, not me. And um, But if I do understand a comment or whatever, I will absolutely engage. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's all I got for now. I will talk to y'all later. I'm D.L. Saint. Peace.